Yeah. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting for November 16th. We will begin with an observance of silence. Thank you. Please rise for a pledge to the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have uh, time for public comment. Anybody, any takers? Right. Then we'll move on to the approval of our minutes of our November 2nd uh, meeting and also our workshop of the 11 8 is included. We approve those minutes as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any deletions or additions or corrections? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so me. Well, Mrs. Newens, Treasurer's Report. Word. Had receipts November 14th and 15th of $954.60. We had total cash of $1,814,742.90. We had expenditures of $1,261,942.61, leaving us a balance of $552,800.29. I'll make a motion to approve the treasurer's report uh, subject to audit. Second. We moved and seconded that we approve the treasurer's report as presented. Any questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Morning. Human Resources, Michelle Snaisley. Personnel transactions under resignations and terminations. Rebecca Montavolo, caseworker one in children and youth, rescind offer of employment effective November 13th. <laughs> Melissa Rump, full time telecommunicator in the Department of Emergency Services, resignation effective November 13th, with the last working day being November 9th. Brittany Purcell, full time correctional officer at the jail, resignation effective November 8th. Kira Reyes, full-time correctional officer at the jail resignation, effective November 22nd. Should make a motion to approve those resignations, terminations. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? If not, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Under changes of status, transfers, and promotions, I have a motion to approve Janelle Gector, director of the Renova Center recommendation to change the vacant program coordinator position hours from 40 hours work per week to 37 and a half hours work per week effective immediately. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve that request. Any from Renova, any questions regarding the motion? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Kristen Williams, change of status from caseworker one in children and youth to caseworker two in children and youth at the rate of $1,661.28 by weekly effective November 26th. Sandy Rudiger, transfer from admin assistant one in domestic relations to EI caseworker two at MHID EI at the rate of $1,661.28 by weekly effective November 27th. Motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so ordered. Under other transactions, Area Agency on Aging would like to hire Maureen Smith as an Aging Care Supervisor 1 at the rate of $2,006.55 by weekly effective November 27th. Children and Youth would like to hire Samantha Trancucci as a social services aid one slash case aid at the rate of $1,160.45 by weekly effective November 20th. Children and youth would like to hire Minerva Cadez as a caseworker one at the rate of $1,562.16 by weekly effective November 20th. President Judge Kilwalk would like to hire Rosalind Cantrell Betts as an office support two 
at the rate of $1,087.92 biweekly effective November 20th. Information Technology Services would like to hire Braulio Garcia Rivera as an operations specialist at the rate of $1,549.75 biweekly effective November 27th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Paulio Lebron Jimenez as an office support two at the rate of $1,087.92 by weekly effective December 4th. And the sheriff would like to hire Joseph Callis as a casual part-time office support one at the rate of $13.49 per hour effective November 27th. I'll make a motion to approve these other hires and rehires. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve those transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so moved. Moving on to salary board, motion to approve all transactions previously read plus the following. I have a rescind of a longevity payment to Tyra Real. She is no longer employed. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve those uh, salary board transactions. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same sign, so moved. Thanks, Michelle. Good. You slow down. Yeah. Everyone speak slowly. Speak slowly or spell. But I can fill in. You have a burn ban or anything. <laughs> Okay, anyway, introduce yourself, then you may proceed. Good morning, I am Bob Dow, Director of the Department of Emergency Services. And I'm here this morning uh, presenting a lease to the county commissioners between the county and Air Methods Corporation. Uh, they would like to house a 24-7 critical care team with a medical helicopter at our new facility. Um, in terms of this lease, uh, basically they're going to pay us $36,000 a year uh, for the space. Uh, in exchange, there is... A new available resource for Lebanon County. Make a motion to approve the helipad lease and with Air Med Methods Corporation. Second. The only observation: uh, it's a good contract, but the uh, it's not an exclusive use for that. So yeah. we have other air medical partners in the county and. Um, this lease requires air methods to move their aircraft in the event somebody else needs to use that. We have one helipad, so we want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, it's also be a welcome enhancement, the overall safety. Of, you talk about the current condition to land a helicopter to do a medical transport, and it's kind of makeshift. Yep. And this this lease will only take effect sometime in January after we actually move into the building. There's possibly even a little later than that, depending on electricity. But uh, this is. This is a good thing for the county. I didn't see electricity included, but okay. <laughs> um, anything else? Yes, James. Yeah, that revenue will be generated. Um, what will that go towards? Is that the general fund, or how will that be spent? Does that stay within uh, your it, coffers? It goes or? back into our 9 1 fund, but it basically offsets the cost of the general fund obligations to running this building. Anything else? I don't know if you. Engaged for a moment when I went to the door, but the the exclusive, the, the non-exclusive use, the way that will will practically work is that if there's an incoming helicopter, did you talk about that? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I said yeah, Sorry, I he didn't. He didn't explain it in detail. If an incoming helicopter, there's an incoming helicopter known, they will scramble, lift off, that will be empty, right. and and they can. Right. And this is, you know, this is there. There are tenants of ours. That's what's happening at leasing space from us. This does not imply a, a specific partnership of any kind with their methods. Um, we're not endorsing them. We're just uh, getting some revenue and leasing them some space and providing, enabling their provides you know, space to yeah. place a unit here yeah. when they choose to, yeah. and they're also going to represent others and use when they need to. Yeah. So yeah. when when. Okay. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so moved. Anything else, Robert? Okay, I can give a real quick one. Yeah, go ahead. Time. I can talk about the going for a minute and just say sure. that yeah, they don't have everyone here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> at this point, our electrical equipment is, we haven't gotten any new equipment since the last meeting. 
uh, the current equipment that's there is still being installed. We are close to the point, probably mid December, if everything stays on track. I I couldn't say that out loud because I'm feeling that I might be jinxing us, but uh, mid December would be when we might actually get to the point where we can turn light switch on. None of our redundancies will work yet, though we're still pretty far away from having all the equipment we need to be fully redundant, which is you know final box we have to check before moving into critical services. But if power gets turned on by mid December, that will allow us to start this commercial power that will allow us to start provisioning systems and balancing doing all the things that we need to set this building up. Uh, and non staff that don't require those redundancies could move in shortly thereafter. So progress is being made. It's slow, but progress is being made. I'm not sure I want to go there, but is there any update on the 911 funding? Just just what we already. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I did see an article in Penn Live that pretty much covered it, but um, earlier this week, um, it appeared there was a bill or that, the, yeah, that the, the, there was a bill ready to move at a dollar ninety seven from a dollar sixty five. That was, uh, again, I'm just kind of regurgitating what was reported in Penn Live and what I had also heard. Um, but um, that that has since slowed down or or halted for the moment, um, and hopefully they will get back to it in um, in December. It, it appeared that it was going to be a dollar sixty five renewed for another uh, almost two years to September of twenty twenty five. So it would have the sunset would have been extended at the same rate. Then it appeared it was going to move on at a dollar ninety seven. Uh, County Commission Association has requested two dollars thirty cents, um, but I think we're back we're back to square one at this moment where we're you know it's a dollar sixty five and it's sunsetting in January, and there are three session days left on their calendar. And those that would make the I think there is a distinction between the Jonestown flood and and this. Yeah, yeah, there are a couple of things in play. I guess there there are there are some who uh, don't want to see the fund used for things other than it's intended, which uh, you know Bob can attest to the fact that these are these are heavily audited funds. Uh, every dime is is you know examined by Pima, and then there's even a third party auditor that comes in and, and randomly uh, every or every other year it's not even random it's yeah. every other year each county is subject to the to the third party so uh, there's For a lot of students yeah. So yeah and and the other thing that that I've heard is is that uh, you know it's been there's a concern that it not be something like the Johnstown flood tax which wasn't here but evidently it was uh, imposed but never lifted um I, I think that the the obvious difference here is that uh the Johnstown flood was an event that came and went. This is not going anywhere. 911 services are critical to every day uh, to you know safety of, of the entire community and state and, mm -hmm. and country, and it's just not going away. And so at this point we have budgeted the dollar sixty-five. Which is a uh, uh, three million dollars in revenue for Lebanon County, um, and hopefully this doesn't fall apart in any way that that we're faced with that gap. Yeah. So there's you know still some hope that in three session days they can get this done. Well, thank you. Anything else, uh, Jim? Yeah, while you're there, because it is interesting, you mentioned sort of just about a burn ban. We're like at least 10, 10 inches deficit, they say on TV, in rainfall, heading into winter. And it looks like no rain. I mean, maybe a little bit Friday night into Saturday, but really, where, where are we at? Is like, Are you expecting that? When would that go into effect? Where, where is the county at right now? It has not been discussed at this point. In general, those burn bans are uh, the result of either uh, the fire chiefs collectively coming to us and asking, or sometimes we will pull them proactively and say, are you interested? Um, when we pull them proactively, it's generally driven by an increase in wildfire events, which we have had at this point. But if, if that becomes a reality, we will do that. Uh, and if they collectively, if the majority of them are in favor of it, 
I will come to the board with the recommendation that we move forward the burn ban. Uh, I would add that I think a, a winter burn ban is a pretty rare occurrence, and it's it's relying on on outdoor activity mostly causing the wildfires. So yeah. the risk is definitely lower when people yeah. are outside burning stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know that we've ever done one in the winter. I, I don't recall. But with leaves rain. falling, there you know cigarette butts or something. There's a chance that it would yeah. be more prop prevalent than it was yes. before the leaves fall. But you haven't seen an increase in in calls from that nature, have not. And we have not gotten any requests from fire service to yeah. to um, entertain one. But you know, keep our ear to the ground, and if we see an increase in calls, we'll pull. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Uh, I think there's still waiting for two people out there. So well, I'll do a couple things I have here. A few minutes worth, anyway. Sure. Um, first, I have a uh, request from the Lebanon Valley Rail Trail Organization. To uh, request an extension of a Marcellus Shale grant that they received for the John E. Wanger Memorial Park landscaping work. Um, this grant would have expired by now. However, I think everyone's aware that the John Wanger Park has begun. It is under, you know, well under construction, and they're asking for an extension to this grant of fifteen thousand dollars toward that landscaping work. Which will give them plenty of time, and they anticipate this to be complete in 2021. Okay. So motion to approve. Second. It's moved and seconded that we extend the uh, expiration date of that grant. Any questions regarding the motion? And all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs. So moved. Okay. Staying with the Leather Valley Rail Trail, uh, they would like to apply for a DCED grant, Department of Community and Economic Development grant, in the amount of $90,414.02. The purpose of this grant would be to acquire equipment for maintenance of the trail, uh, a small dump truck and a heavy duty trailer to be used. And um, what they're running up against is they have some heavy equipment that is used specifically a tractor with a a boom arm that they use for mowing the width of the trail. And now that the trail goes from the Lancaster County line all the way, you know, up into Jonestown area and so on, they really aren't running the equipment up the trail that far. They sometimes have to transport it and they just simply don't have heavy enough equipment to do that. So the dump truck would would come in handy for them uh, and then would also have the capacity with the heavy duty trailer to transport bigger equipment because before they could manage by just doing it on the trail but it's just gotten to be uh, you know a, a 25 plus mile trail so okay. a motion. yeah and then the county must be the applicant for that so they're asking that it pass through here and be applied make a motion to approve the dced grant um for the lebanon valley rail trail Doctor, this is the application for it Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Okay. Aye. Both same signs, so moved. Okay. We have a uh, liquid fuels application for funds for North Anvil Township. They would like to use their allocation for line painting on Township Roads. Project, project cost is $16,047.15. And their allocation of two thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars will go toward that if approved. Go approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve that uh, liquid fuels request of from North Anvil Township. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. Okay, I have a um, application for disabled veteran for exemption from property taxes of Bradley McLean of Rose Lane, Jonestown. I'll make a motion to approve the 100% disabled veteran for real estate tax exemption. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same sign, so moved. Okay. I have a, an appointment to a uh, member of, for a member of the Women's Commission, be a new member whose term would be effective December 2023, December 13th, 2023, ending uh, December 26. And that is Lisa Albert. And, uh, I think the attachment 
there's an attachment to the uh, memo from Ms. Gonzalez of the Women's Commission. Yep. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, it's been moved and second that we approve that Women's Commission appointment. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post same sign, so moved. Contract for the I don't know. Yeah, I just have two oh. more things. All right. Okay. Yes, I think that I think they're all here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a contract between the uh, Community Action Partnership and Adriel Panero for transports under the Medical Assistance Transportation Program. Make a motion to approve the contract for Medical Assistance Trans Transportation. Second. It's moved and seconded that we approve that cap request. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same signs, so order. And the uh, last item I have is a proclamation uh, recognizing Roberta DeSantis, who is a member of the Greater Levin Refuse Authority, and will continue to be a member, however, is stepping down in her role as chair of the board for the last 20 years. So I've been asked to recognize her, and I think they're going to have a recognition for her with this proclamation. Yes, sorry. The motion to approve that proclamation. I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this proclamation uh, recognizing Roberta DeSantis of the uh, GLRA. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Yeah, I'll see if you have Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, well, thank you for joining us. And uh, Brett, are you going to tee it up? I am. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> so my name is Brett Holland. I'm with uh, Stiefel Financial. I'm my business partner, uh, Mike Battistelli, sitting my right here. And then we have uh, Peter. Uh, never say that. Seekus. thank Ficus. you. Yep. I'm going to go wrong there. No, thank and you. He's a portfolio good. manager with uh, Dearborn Investments. And then uh, also uh, Brian Payne, who's a director with Dearborn as well. Brian's been here a few other times as well. Yep. Welcome uh, back. Dearborn, they manage about 13.5% of the pension, and they're going to make some comments on their portfolio. Um, also, just to uh, say congratulations to each of you on your recent uh, well, wins in the election as well. Um, the report you have in front of you is the normal report that we go through. So if I can ask you to turn <coughs> to page 4 of 11, if you would. And uh, this is just kind of our normal report that we go through. And on the top left hand side up there is uh, our performance numbers. And this is again for um, July 1st uh, through September 30th is what it is for the last quarter. And under current uh, period there, the beginning balance of the pension fund was $132,273,169. And then we have had uh, a decline during that time of about 4.6 million and also withdrawals of about 2.7 million. So the ending balance uh, at the end of the period, at the end of the quarter was 124,891,512. And then you can see the uh, year to date number next to that, which would be just January 1st through the end of September. And just for sake of time there, uh, the performance during uh, the last uh, nine months was the 5.12% if you see that underneath there. Um, Moving to the right hand uh, bottom corner, if you will, is kind of our allocation and Mike's going to talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes, but just kind of to highlight it right now, at least anyhow, our cash equivalence there is showing 2%. Again, Mike's going to comment on that a little bit more. Our equities moving clockwise around there, our equities are at 65%. 
Uh, fixed income or bonds is at 28%. And then the alternative investments uh, are uh, currently at 6%, which again, that's the REIT portfolio is what that is. Any questions on that at all? <laughs> and we just wanna make one small recommendation, then we'll move to one more page. Um, in um, your investment policy statement, that's the piece that we review each year. Uh, actually, that'll be coming up here in the next few months here that we'll review that again. And that just kind of gives the parameters for what percentages in stocks and bonds and cash and things like that. And it allows some latitude in there. And, and we've always remained or stayed inside the uh, bounds of that. Uh, but we'd like to uh, rebalance uh, uh, the portfolio by pulling about $3 million and moving that into some fixed income, uh, into some of your bond portfolio. We've allowed the equities to kind of run up over the last few years, and that's benefited uh, the pension fund. But we'd like to pull about $3 million, which would be around 2% of the portfolio. So a silly example, I always say each year you don't go out and dig out your landscaping every spring and replant your bushes. You just kind of prune them. And this is just a pruning of the bushes essentially is what it is. So we're just kind of bringing things back in line a little bit. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, part of the reason for that is the bonds with what's taken place with interest rates over the last 18 months, a lot of bonds now you can buy at about 93 cents in the dollar. So we're trying to take advantage of that. That hasn't been the case uh, for the last 15 years, basically, but we have that opportunity now. We want to try to take advantage of just shifting a few dollars over to that. But you all would be acceptable of that. Okay. Um, then one other uh, page, we'll have you go to page six, if you will. I mean, Mike will give some more up to date details. So, page six on the right hand side there at the top, you see one, three, five, and 10 year period. And if you go to the bottom line is the total. So a one year return um, uh, over the last 12 months is 12.33%. A three year return is 3.96% and that's per year. A five year period is 4.85%. And the 10 year number is 5.3, excuse me, 5.93% what that is. So that's uh, a little longer perspective. With that, Mike's going to give some more up-to-date numbers as of uh, just the last couple of days. Before I do that, any questions mm -hmm. regarding what? I guess I don't really have one, but I once in a while I ask, what, what's the assumption? Is it 7.25? I believe it's seven and a quarter. I believe. Right. Right. I know it's dangerous to move around, but, but we obviously haven't been near that. Uh, but it does have an adverse with the, uh, the required deposit so I guess I'll just keep that number in my head and hope we get closer to it. Well one thing good you all have done is you've been consistent in contributing and making deposits into the fund so had you not been doing that over the last number of years um, that definitely has a negative effect. Yeah I think we're over a decade. Correct. Yes yeah, sir. So, yeah. Okay. And really the improvement I one favor we may have to turn that better on. It's true. Stay close to those. Sarcasm. You said that in jest, right? Yes. <laughs> Nobody's laughing. You know anything? <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go right to Mike. <laughs> I'm going to provide uh, the up-to-date number. This is through yesterday. And again, these I always caution: these are not audited numbers until um, we get into a finalized report like that. But, uh, um, through yesterday, the, the balance on the uh, pension. Uh, Account is one hundred twenty-seven million six hundred eighty-seven thousand two hundred thirty-nine dollars, and we are up now eight point six three percent. So we we really had a, a challenging third quarter, uh, as you know, illustrated there by Brett's numbers. Um, these gentlemen will probably touch on that a little bit, but uh, you know, the Fed recently came out and and uh, did not raise rates at the end of October, maybe signaling uh, that they might be done with interest rate movements, mm -hmm. possibly, I don't know what data shows going forward. And I think since November 1st, the, the market's really responded and it's, you know, shown here. So um, regarding uh, the allocation, it's pretty much the same. I do want to point out, you know, in this report, it shows there's about a 2% position in cash. That's pure cash. That's, that's cash that's cash, cash. But our managers also hold some cash 
Mm -hmm. One particularly, I think we've had Washington Crossing and I think they were in in August. Um, so really the cash position is, is really a little over uh, six and a quarter percent or about $8 million. And the, the reason I, I wanted to point that out is, you know, a good example of the last three months, when we've had to provide distributions to the pensionees, we weren't having to go sell things when, when the market was down. We had cash on hand. And I think that's really important. You know, had we had to sell things when they were down, we don't get the recovery we just had in the last couple of weeks. Um, so strategically, we've kind of just held on to more cash uh, and managers have as well. So I just, just wanted to point that out. Any questions for Mike or Fred? We get to the favorite part. Thank you. My name is Brian Payne. Great to see all of you again. I've had the privilege of visiting with you a few times over the years. So thank you for your trust and Dearborn Partners to manage uh, a rising dividend U.S. equity portfolio for the pension, and uh, thank you for the privilege of, of visiting. It was okay. Uh, we'll use a little bit of our time, just a couple minutes, to um, go over just a refresher of who and what is Dearborn Partners, and then I'll most of all turn it over to you and to have some time with Peter Dekas, one of our portfolio managers, key member of our investment team, who's making the decisions about what stocks to hold and what stocks not to hold uh, in our portfolio that you own for us. So uh, if you don't mind, we'll just cover the first few slides of this presentation about what we believe in most of Dearborn Partners, that's the power of rising dividends. Companies that pay dividends and ideally will grow them every year at a nice order of magnitude. And really the, the main impressions I, I would like to convey would be anytime you trust your assets or Mike and Brett, trust client assets to a manager. You want to have full faith in the strength and health of that company and the talents of the people who are making the decisions for your money. Uh, so on this first slide about Dearborn Partners, we're a Chicago-based registered investment advisor founded in 1997. And we started this rising dividend portfolio that you're invested in as an available portfolio for folks outside of our firm to invest in in 2011. And so we just on September 30th had our 12 year anniversary in that strategy. There's over $8.4 billion in that strategy. The firm assets are over $10 billion. Our firm is entirely employee owned. There's no outside ownership of our firm. There's no debt at our firm. So the firm is very strong, healthy, and growing. And we do one thing. I'm just you know, moving to the next slide, a quote we believe in and guides every decision that Peter and his colleagues on the investment team make. We do one thing, and that's just invest in public equities that pay dividends, and we believe can grow them. But I think what's somewhat differentiating about Dearborn Partners is, yes, we like a current yield. That's nice. But more important to us is the dividend growth rate. How much is that company increasing its income stream from its equity to its owners every year? That is a sign, as we say here, of a dividend is a sign of health. You must achieve a certain level of maturity in your business to be able to pay a dividend to your shareholders. But a rising dividend is really a sign of strength. So that's a bit of a tell that we look for to choose those companies, that dividend growth rate. And Finally, the next slide we'll cover before turning it over most of all to your questions for Peter from inside the investment team room is the strength of the investment team. So you can see here Peter's pictured along with his two other co-portfolio managers, Carol Lipman, who's a pioneer in the equity income space. She founded this strategy in the early 1990s at a firm called AG Edwards. So she is one of the marquee names in the entire industry around investing in stocks that pay and grow dividends. And joining Peter and Carol on the investment team is Mike Andelman, who's been here with me in prior years to me. Before. So uh, with that, we'll turn it over to you and any questions you might have for Peter about inside the investment team room, the decisions they make, uh, what's going on in the economy and the markets and how we view our portfolios. Great. Anything in particular on your mind you'd like to ask Peter about the portfolios? I don't have anything in particular. Yeah. I like the forecast part, but okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's good. Well, uh, 
Yeah, the uh, no, that's good. Thank you. And again, I'm, I'm Peter Dikas, one of the portfolio managers. We thank you uh, for partnering with us and having us here today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Brian, for starting us out. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, the way we choose the the companies in this portfolio, and I'll get to your forecast here in a second. But the you know the way we choose really is, you know, we we just need to make sure that we see a a dividend that is rising over time. So to emphasize that, right, we really we want to beat inflation. And so inflation historically over the last 50 years probably been three percent, right? It's a debatable where that runs today, but we want to we want our income stream to rise above that amount. So that's the first thing we need. The second thing we need is we need to have really strong companies and we measure that with the balance sheet. So the very first thing we do is we look at a balance sheet, which shows us where the debt is in that company. We really prefer companies that have no debt. That's where we like to live, right? But if they have any debt, it has to be investment grade debt or better. And so the beauty of our um strategy i really feel like lies in this this uh rising dividends a sign of strength because what we found over time is that in in bad markets and that's where you really kind of you you get your metal right is is in bad markets you want to have confidence in a company that is raising their dividends and so a couple of like household names right is, is mcdonald's okay so take mcdonald's for 47 years consecutively they have increased their dividend the last dividend increase like is, was 9.9%, so-called 10% increase. And that's exactly what we want to see. And and, and the, the reason that we like to see that after 47 years, you can kind of figure that probably on the 48th year that will increase that. And that gives you a confidence that McDonald's takes that on willingly. You know, a bond, an interest payment is an obligation I have to pay to a bondholder, but a dividend is something I'm willingly taking on as management. So I believe in you know, whatever the business is. And we only try to pick great businesses. So I don't want to make that minimal. Like that's a big part of our job is to find good businesses. But McDonald's pretty, you know, a good household name. But that over time, any kind of market, we're going to be able to increase dividends, even if it's a bad market. So that's that's the crux of what we do. Um, so the three things we look at are um, making sure we have a good dividend, a great balance sheet, and then a great company. So those are the three things we always look for. Um, we have been doing that since our beginning in 2011. Really, strategy kind of goes back to the 1990s. To your question on forecast, you know, so are you thinking like for the portfolio or for the economy at large or either way? Economy at large. Yeah, the economy at large, I think, um, I, I think we've gotten over the hump of inflation. So if you go if you go back and you kind of look, a lot of people have been calling for recessions. So you, you, there have been recession calls going back probably 18 months, right? So you, you've seen that. Um, and what you're seeing is, and what I, I put ourselves in the camp of, uh, probably we feel more soft landing. We're pretty bullish on just really American businesses, in particular the businesses that we own, but also broadly speaking, you could say the S and P 500, the 500 businesses that are kind of looked out there. We think the ability for those businesses to innovate and to um, innovate kind of behind the scenes, so they don't talk about it, but as much, but just doing things, making their factory more efficient, will help efficiencies uh, to offset inflation, helping your their back office become more efficient. Um, you know, just it, it could be very simple things, but software, different things like that. So we think that their profitability is actually pretty good. And so we look at the valuations today. Um, uh, we think the valuations in the entire market look actually pretty attractive. We think the growth rates, overall growth rates are kind of in this 9, 10, 11 ish percent rate. We think those seem reasonable. Um, so again, I think inflation, we're probably over the hump of inflation. Um, Interest rates today are probably where they were. Actually, I don't know how to say how many years ago, but they're just not su su super low. And a lot of the companies, so the the forty nine companies that we have in our in our portfolio are going to particularly do fine because they don't have a lot of debt, so they don't have a lot to refinance and what have you. But I think broadly speaking, looking at at five hundred companies of the uh, uh, the S and P five hundred, I would say most of their balance sheets look to be in pretty good shape. I think most corporations have done a good job of, of their debt. So kind of looking at it from the lens of, you know, inflation, rates, valuations, I'm actually pretty bullish um, about that. So I'd, I'd be in the camp of kind of, I, I think the economy can kind of soft land in here, right? And, um, you know, employment looks looks pretty strong uh, still. So that, that's kind of the, that's kind of where we go. And, um, the thing I guess I would add to that is, again, I think when I look at these businesses, we really look at a stock as a business. And when you step back from the stock and you look at the business, they're very efficient and they're very innovative. 
And I think that it kind of inspires me that these are great American companies that are producing and being very innovative. And the innovation goes into their sales, but it goes into stuff you can't really see. They don't talk about it on their earnings call, but it's just regular blocking and tackling of innovation. And so, but long story short, that's kind of a bullish perspective that I would give you. Thank you. Any questions for this team here? Oh, yes. Um, Can you just identify yourself? Kate Buck from, from South London Dairy Tension. I just am curious, I'm assuming you have union and non union pensions, and I'm just wondering what percentage are funding for each? Are you fully funded in any of them? Is there a percentage of, you know, you're funded 80% in them? Any ideas? They're not separated. Yeah. Retire, it general. doesn't matter that a retiree was in a union or not. Do you have one general pension for yes. all? And then what's the funding? Are you 80% funded? Uh, last time it was, it was around 80%, 81. 83. No, that's not it. It's it's fluctuates just a bit each year, but it's it's right in that neighborhood. That's up from which is which is a fair place to be. I mean, few counties, if any, are a hundred percent funded. I think there were a few up in the northern border of Pennsylvania when they were receiving lots of Marcellus Shale funding. They they funded their pensions to a hundred percent because they were looking some places for their money. I think, but uh, but eighty percent. 80 to 85 percent is kind of sweet. We're, we're happy there. Yeah. But it's a, but it's all just one pension. You don't split them. No, no. It doesn't matter where the retiree came from. It's all. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, Peter, I just wanted to say thank you for affirmation. I've been following articles in the paper and they confirm what you're saying as yeah. well. Oh, good. Um, yeah, this is like the third one I've seen in the last two weeks. So I'm fairly confident that we are over the hump and that, uh, how can I say, the job market is stabilizing and um, inflation is stabilizing. And I think we're in a good place right now. Thank you. Yeah. You see an easing in the pressures of cost of labor? Um, uh, yeah, a little bit I do. I think I think we're going to see a little bit of easing in that price of labor, and then um, it, it easing. But um, you know, the, the way that you almost kind of think of it as a triangle is you you know you kind of corporate profits, you have employment, you have consumer spending, right? And so one of those triangles sometimes gets could could lead the other to be a little. If you have unemployment, you might have less consumer spending, which leads to less corporate profits. All those triangles are kind of working pretty decently. Again, not. And, and so I think there is an easing of pressure on labor, and and also um, some of the companies that we talk to to um, are, are saying, hey, we we have a lot of store hours that we need to fill, but that's we but we're paying more for that store hour, so we're being extra efficient within that store um, to to kind of pull that that out. So yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate thank you. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, quickly. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said for you gave McDonald's as an example, sure. forty-seven years yeah. increasing. Where, at what point do they make it into your hundred and fifty? That you analyze. I mean, do they have to have ten years or is it five? I mean, how many? How many? That's a good. Question. Relatively new household names are are in that. Yeah. So that's a good question. So um, we we don't do it from a look back perspective. So so since we're active managers, so we can look and do it. So Apple's a good example. So when we own Apple in the portfolio because they've in consistently increased their dividend. And once we saw that Apple had the ability to pay an increase, that we did it. So we didn't wait for like a ten year track record. To okay. do it. So as soon as we see visibility. That we think that number they have to pay it. <laughs> you know that's a willing thing that the company has to do. And some pay, you know some companies don't pay dividends, but mm -hmm. once we see it and can forecast it, then we'll put it in there. And if they if they slip once, they're out. Yeah. We have we have we have a zero tolerance. If you cut, you just you're not part of the game. And so debt and also debt. If you have too much debt, we just do. We don't. You're not even. Yeah. You're not in our. You're not in our ballpark. <laughs> so it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, philosophy, very interesting for the pen. Yes. All right. Yes. I make one comment. I'm sorry. So, I don't know. I'd love to hear what Dearborn has to say with regards to employment. 
So Stiefel, as well as some other groups that we get to, if we start seeing uh, unemployment rates start to move up some, that would not be a huge surprise. The employment is very solid today, to your point, Commissioner. Um, but that unemployment rate of three and a half has already started to move up. And over the next 12 months, we would not be surprised if you start hearing some of that uh, moving up, which depending on how it's reported, it's the sky is falling, the sky is falling. It's it, it's it's all part of the whole inflation coming down. It's, that's just part of it. So if you do hear that, I, I don't think that would be surprising. I don't know if you guys feel differently. At no, all. I, I would concur with that. Well, thank you all. All right, thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Good holiday. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Seems money on the company. Thanks, Trey. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Sure. 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 Bert, if you'd like to um, introduce yourself and maybe a couple seconds on minutes on, on yourself uh, background wise, and then uh, you can go ahead with your presentation. Wonderful. Uh, my name is Bert Miuccio. I'm the executive director of the United Way of Lebanon County. Um, I took that role uh, five months ago in mid June. Um, I, uh, I have worked in the nonprofit sector for my entire career. Um, I um, I have led several other nonprofit organizations, um, some much larger um, than the United Way of Lebanon County. Uh, this is my first time uh, serving as uh, as a leader of a United Way organization. Um, previously, my background was in leading healthcare and technology and social impact organizations um, that that had a national and even a global market. Uh, I am from Berks County. I grew up there. I lived in Berks County for 35 years. I lived in Hershey for 15 years. And I live in Berks County now, uh, and I'm trying to come to uh, to move to Lebanon County, but that's not an exactly an easy thing to do these days. All right. And was there anything that, that Mike uh, or that you want to uh, illustrate here? Just as uh, it's been a pleasure working. With Bert, I think he's been a great addition to the United Way in Lebanon County, and uh, we need to go into the impact the United Way makes in Lebanon County is is tremendous, and we are very supportive. We're right in the midst of our own employee campaign for county employees right now, and we're, we're very supportive. and And thank you for being here. Yep. Would you like me to share information about well, our campaign? Or yeah, the, yeah. the only other thing we have is a proclamation we'd like to present to you, and Jamie, you can read that when you're ready for that. Yeah. Wonderful. You'd like me to share some information? Yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. As as Mike said, we are in uh, in the midst of our campaign right now. Our goal is to raise $1 million this year. Uh, the United Way of Lebanon County raised $850,000 um, last year. Uh, so a, a significant increase uh, this year. Campaign um, started in September and it runs through next June. Um, the last time I calculated the revenue so far, um, it was $250,000 um, toward that $1 million goal, but we are right in the middle of the workplace campaign season. Um, and so I've already received word today that there's um, that takes us way over uh, 300,000 of, of revenue to date. Um, the United Way um, uses campaign contributions from individuals and families, from corporations, from employees of local companies um, in two primary ways. Um, the first is to uh, is to fund community impact grants. Um, so last year, the United Way of Lebanon County um, issued grants or or actually made grants to 18 different nonprofit organizations um, that serve the people of Lebanon County. Um, what's raised here stays here. Um, and so all 18 of those organizations are very well known service organizations um, in Lebanon County. And if you're interested, I have a list of those in, in this little book that I'd be happy to, to leave with the commissioners and guests. Um, the second primary way is that um, contributions fund what United Way refers to as signature service programs. 
Um, those are service programs that are funded on a on an ongoing basis, and they are the volunteer income tax assistance program for families that earn less than fifty seven thousand dollars a year to receive free tax preparation services provided by IRS trained and certified volunteers here in Lebanon County. Where is that taking place right now? Grace United Church of Christ. And that is where? That is on Route 72. I don't know the address. North or south? Uh, it is south. Thank you. You're welcome. I had to get my bearings there for a moment. It's all right. Um, yeah, they... That served about 400 people uh, and families last year, um, resulting in um, in more than $700,000 of tax returns, uh, tax refunds, I should say, uh, and tax credits. And the average um, household income for people who utilize that service is 20, was $26,000 last year. So we are gearing up now for this next tax season, recruiting additional volunteers, additional partners, so we can expand the number of sites and therefore serve more people. Is there a number to call if they need assistance? Yes, there is. 211. Um, the, the easiest way for people to schedule a visit to have their taxes prepared is to dial 211. 211 will provide that scheduling service. 211 is the second signature program that I wanted to mention. 211 is an emergency, excuse me, it is a resource hotline um, that is available to residents of Lebanon County. It's both a telephone hotline uh, and a web-based service. So people can, um, can pick up the phone and call 211 when they need assistance with um, housing or utilities or food. Um, or anything else that they that they're just not sure where they can turn to for resources. Yeah. They they call two one one or they go to the two one one website and they can receive a referral to a local agency here in Lebanon County that can um, address those needs. Manny, I want to make sure I heard this correctly because I've never heard this before. They call the number. They're not going to get a referral to another place. They are actually going to schedule. They will schedule the the uh, VITA um, tax preparation service, um, but if they call for any other needs, they will receive a referral to a local um, Lebanon County um, health or human service organization. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the, the third program uh, that United Way funds with community contributions on an ongoing basis is communities and schools. Um, Communities in Schools is a uh, is a Harrisburg based statewide um, organization that Lebanon County United Way partners with. Um, they they um, place people that are very well trained, essentially social work trained, um, into um, into schools. The United Way is the funding partner, so the United Way provides the funding for communities and schools of Pennsylvania. Um, to have full time, uh, a full time staff person in the elementary schools, um, Ebenezer, uh, Union Canal, and um, uh, Northwest Lebanon Elementary Schools. Um, that program is is a really really dramatic has a very dramatic impact. Those those three signature service programs um, <coughs> touched. I mean, touched people in Lebanon County about 35,000 times in the past uh, 12 months, providing services and referrals for services. So that's that's how we use the contributions from the community. Any questions for Bert? Well, just to add on to that, Bert, I don't know, if, uh, I'm sure you can attest to this, but again, in my experience, and been around this community a long time, and been involved in fundraising uh, in this community, that one of the important things to donors is the stewardship of their dollars. And that starts with the board. And I'm, I'm so impressed with the United Way board having you know, served on, on these people as our liaison for the past year and a half. Uh, it, great, really strong caliber of people representing broad uh, spectrum of local business and community leaders and uh, good stewards and very engaged Board. Uh, so that's important to donors. 
Yes, indeed. Not only engaged in fundraising and in general governance of the organization, but it is a committee of that board of directors along with community volunteers that determines um, what organizations um, in Lebanon County, what nonprofit organizations will receive the, the community impact grants on an annual basis. So we, we send out an RFP um, request for proposal uh, to those organizations, they submit the proposals, and then the Community Impact Committee of the Board of Directors, comprised of board members and community volunteers, reviews those, makes recommendations for which proposals to fund and in what amounts um, to the Board of Directors, and then the board makes those final decisions and um, announces those, those grants to those organizations. Okay, thank you, folks. You're good. All right, uh, proclamation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whereas the Academy of Lebanon County has been a vital nonprofit organization serving our community for more than 75 years and is committed to directing our resources to solve challenges within our own communities. And whereas the 2023 20, 24 community wide annual giving campaign is underway and runs through June 30 next year, seeking contributions from individuals and families, corporations and small businesses, civic organizations, and charitable foundations. And whereas the campaign theme is what's raised here stays here, and the goal is to raise $1 million to fund ongoing community investments in Lebanon County through impact grants given annually to many different nonprofit service organizations in the county. Whereas Lebanon County is home to generous people and strong support systems, yet far too many local children and families struggle with food and housing insecurity, access to quality health care, child care, education or training and more. Now, therefore, we, the Lebanon County Commissioners, do hereby recognize the United Way of Lebanon County as it works to solve the root causes to these challenges, not just to provide short-term service. It provides a hand up to those in need while working toward a higher quality of life and long-term self-sufficiency for all county residents. And hereby declares September 2023 as Hunger Action Month in Lebanon County, and we call this observance to the attention of our citizens. Is there a motion to accept so moved. No Sorry, second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this proclamation. Any uh, questions or comments? Uh, before, I'll wait till after. We'll, we'll, let's adopt this first. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. So moved. We have your proclamation uh, in good order here. And I just wanted to ask uh, we are one of your um, workplace campaigns. Yes. And I was just, you know, I, I think I've heard that that's still a very vibrant part of the activity of the United Way is, is you know, setting those up. And can you just give a little bit about the workplace campaign? Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, 65 or so companies and organizations um, conducted workplace campaigns over the past few years and any of the past few years. Um, right now, about 40 are underway. Um, and they generate the, the vast majority of the revenue to the United Way, the contributor yeah. revenue um, to the United Way that we're able to, to give back to the community and in, in community investments. Excuse me. So, yes, the county's campaign is is uh, underway right now or, or just soon to begin. Um, and I'm going to be speaking to county employees in a webinar uh, oh, good. this afternoon. And uh, part of that is the uh, payroll deduction option that we offer, and that I'd, I'd encourage other businesses to consider that. I mean, that's a very easy way for employees to participate. Precisely, and there's an incentive prizes that the United Way provides uh, for participation. Um, there is incentives um, that employers um, often provide. I believe that's happening with county employees. Yep. I know it's happening with um, with the with many other companies. Um, Companies like to make the uh, workplace campaign fun, um, a team building mm -hmm. um, uh, activity, uh, and uh, and it, a lot of the um, the local companies um, are conducting the campaigns right now and reporting that they're having a lot of success. Good. All right, Bert. Well, thank you. We do have a our participation. We'd like to present that this proclamation, but also confirmed with our fellow commissioners. I'm happy to report that we are. Uh, on board and 100 percent participation among the county commissioners and we'd like to present our individual gifts with a photo and, and with the proclamation wonderful Mike. Uh, thank you thank you
see you around. Good to see you. Oh, well, that's all. We'll leave these here. Thank you. 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 Thank I usually stand in the back and fill this for some reason. But you do. That's the part. Do it to stand in the back. Probably. Very good. Very good. Great. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can probably tell. Hardly. Yes, quick follow up. But you did proclamation. Sorry, we're not taking follow up. How many? <laughs> like what percentage or how many employees uh, traditionally have participated in the county's part of this mm -hmm. or with the county right. employee side? Do we know? Many of us have that number. Even with any employer, that, that fluctuates from year to year. Mm -hmm. You know, and then for years of organizing it at a hospital, you just set a goal and it's about participation. Everybody has. A different level of what they can give, but we always encourage participation. Sure. So you know, just as high as you, you can. How many years do you know? Has the county been probably the entire? Uh, well, I don't know. I can remember Elaine can remember. Ludwig used to coordinate it. Um, so it goes back through Elaine Ludwig when she was voted registrar. That, that I know. Plus years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we, our incentive this year is to take some of the employees out for lunch. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, each of us get to draw names and a nice uh, networking as well. 